I want to thank everybody for coming on time and for taking their seats, okay, so we can begin. I would like to introduce Pastor Jamie Swain, Director of Next Gen Ministry at Cross City Christian Church. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited that we get to partner with Clovis Community. They hold their graduation on our campus. And like you, we serve the next generation. I, I lead a team that does that on our campus. So thank you for having me. My daughter's also a freshman at Clovis Community. So, yay. yay. Love it. So if you would just join me in prayer real quick. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you, God, that... Um, you're moving in our community. I thank you for all those that are in this room this morning that um, serve the students in this community and the families in this community. Um, I pray a blessing over them, and we thank you for this um, time this morning. I pray a blessing for the food and the fellowship. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jamie. Before we go to the next step, can I ask um, our military service um, staff to please stand up in recognition of the great service to our country? I would like to introduce Specialist Eric Ornelas, uh, United States Army and Clovis Community College student. Please stand for the flag salute. Ready, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Specialist Ornelas. And now I would like to introduce Max Humd, music instructor at Clovis Community College. Thank you, everyone, and what a great job, great performance. Thank you. Um, now it is time to eat. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be excusing you by table number so we don't all rush it at the same time. Um, so can I have, um, it's a buffet, it has two lines, okay, as you can see when you came in. So can I, do, can I have tables uh, one through eight can now proceed to the buffet? Good morning, folks. My name is uh, A.J. Fox. I'm the chief meteorologist at KC24, and I was told, let's keep this puppy rolling. So here we go. 
And I was also, it was also suggested to me that I should start this morning with a joke. And I'm like, I don't know any jokes. I'm a weatherman. Come on. But I will tell you this joke. It is the inaugural president's breakfast. So I'm going to start off with a presidential joke. Uh, oh, oh, did you feel that? <laughs> don't worry. It, this, this is a joke about a president. Actually, it's a true story. It's about a president, not our current president, not our immediate past president, and not the president before him. So that should negate most of the venom, okay? So as presidents do, they, they go from country to country and they'll do a tour and, and some kind of goodwill tour. Presidents do that like they often do. And whenever this particular president showed up in a country that didn't speak English, he would have a translator. And so he would say something and then the translator would say something and then he would say something and the translator said something. In the midst of this speech, he said a joke in the you know, early part of the speech. And every country laughed, you know, ah, ha, 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 the president is making a joke. Yeah, it's very good, it's very good. And, and they laughed and very polite. When he came to Japan and delivered the exact same speech, he said something, the translator said something, he said the joke and the translator said the words in Japanese and the place went wild. And he thought, wow, the Japanese really have a great sense of humor. He come to find out later on that the president said a joke and the translator said, President Carter just said something funny, you better laugh. <laughs> so, in the interest of social media, uh, there we go. All right, I'm recording. The weatherman just said something funny. <laughs> go ahead and laugh, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> there we go. All right, now I'm, I'm over 40, so now I'm really recording it. <laughs> that was so much better. All right. <laughs> well, my name is A.J. Fox, and KC24 is one of the sponsors of, uh, of this breakfast. Uh, good morning to everyone. I hope everybody has had a good, very good breakfast. Uh, caterers, thank you very much for doing this. It was a very good breakfast, yes? Amen? I'll uh, tell you a couple things about myself. I'm the chief meteorologist at KC24. I have been since 2009, so this coming March, it'll be 10 years for me there. But uh, the, as the chief meteorologist, uh, this past August, August 28, just a few weeks ago, uh, I celebrated 23 years at KC24. And so, um, so I'm happy to be part of uh, the Central Valley's very first television station. I do, I teach at uh, Fresno City College, Reedley College, Madera Center, and uh, um, I've been there since 2002. I've been teaching uh, weather classes, and at uh, certain colleges it's Geography 8. At Clovis Community, I believe it's Geography 5. They call it environmental conditions, but it's essentially the same, same class. It's a weather and climate uh, situation. This semester I happen to be teaching 100% online, since that's the way education seems to be going. Uh, I have two classes at Reedley College and one at uh, Madera Center. And so since I'm a part-time teacher, they limit the number of units that you teach. And so I'm at the maximum, which, you know, I good, I guess, right? Um, Clovis uh, Community College, I was doing a little research when they said, oh, come up and talk about a couple minutes. And I said, okay, well, I looked on, uh, on their very web page. Uh, they claim to be the 113th community college in the California system. And uh, as of 2015, if that date is correct, they s offer 29 associate degree programs. They have more than 500 classes available, and a lot of these are transferable to CSU and UC systems, which is very important. If any of you know a student, right, who's going to community college, that's their next step. They want to do the next thing, and so that's a big, important uh, step. Dr. Bennett, I just uh, met a moment ago. Uh, she goes, you teach at Fresno City College. You teach at Reedley and Madera. Why don't, why don't you teach at Clovis Community? Well, I applied. <laughs> that's the end of that story. I mean, that's a... <laughs> KC24 is a, a big supporter of education. I don't know if you ever watch our station. Uh, I, I hope you do. Uh, we have a program called Education Matters, and it will always come up if we do a story about education. It'll say Education Matters, and we have other programs that uh, um, 
that are connected to that, like Educator of the Week. That is where we honor a teacher once a week, and their name gets uh, actually placed on a brick on the honor wall at Fresno State and actually gets some money involved for their class, too, so that's good. We also have another program that honors individual students that's called Your Character Matters, where we will honor a student and give them a story and telling about how they're behaving properly or doing the right things and sometimes in... Um, inopportune circumstances uh, where these folks are still standing up and doing the right thing. And so KC24 is a, a big supporter of education, big fan of it. Um, I think that is all I'm going to be saying about it. So congratulations to Clovis Community College, the first presidential bre pre president's breakfast. That's what we're watching uh, this morning. And uh, I'd like to bring to the stage uh, Dr. Paul Purnell, Chancellor of the State Center Community College District. Dr. Purnell. Okay, what a great group and what a great start to the day. Uh, welcome everyone on behalf of State Center Community College District. Now this particular breakfast was the brainstorm of our uh, Clovis Community College pre President, Dr. Lori Bennett. What a great idea and what a great crowd. So many friends out here. I have, I've been here two and a half years and so I get a chance. Most of this is gonna be about Clovis Community College and the crush and, the, and when you see the crush um, it, it looks like a big bull. So I said, that looks like a big bull. And they said, that's, that's a bunch of bull. That's not true. And, and it's a spirit. And so th there is a special spirit for the Clovis Community College. They're the 113th college in the state of California. And it is really exciting. But I get to, and you're going to hear a lot about Clovis and all the great things that, uh, that we're doing out here for students and for our community. And they just hit, I, I, you'll hear this again, but they just hit the 12,000 student mark, which is just incredible. <laughs> but my job is to tell, tell you a little bit about State Center Community College District, and some of you already know about that. Uh, AJ, I'm so glad that you're here, and I, I met AJ when I first got here, and, and that he's teaching for community colleges. We have so many connections of people that teach for us, um, and both uh, part-time and full-time, and people that support us and, and give money to our foundation and, and all the projects that, and support our students. But, but I want to tell you, I want to make my short couple-minute theme here about um, G's, and I think uh, uh, Mayor Brand, you'll you'll appreciate this. We uh, uh, we as a district, our board, and, and I've got several of our trustees here. Uh, Debbie Akeda is from uh, Clovis area, and Ron Nishinaka, and uh, John Leal, and and uh, always great to have all of you here supporting us. But I'm going to focus on. Uh, we purchased a building downtown. It's a 12-story building, and Mayor Brand tells me that he used to. He used to monitor that building. That was part of, part of a job before he became mayor and city council that, that he uh, monitored that building. And this building has a big G on the top of it. Some of you may have seen that as you travel around and you see that big G. And so I had staff and they said, what are you going to do with the big G? Uh, I've had people stop me in the middle of the road and, and, and stop and say, what are you going to do with the big G on the top of the building? And um, it, it wasn't AJ. He didn't, he didn't stop me from doing that. So anyway, so so I started thinking about taking that G off, and then I thought, you know, that G, that G stands for good, and we really have a good community, and, uh, and we have great people, and we have great students. And then I started thinking, uh, we just hired a, a new vice president. His name is De La Garza. There's a good G. <laughs> How, what do you think of that, Marco? How, a bitch? Yeah, okay. And, and then, the, and then the last word, uh, the, the last letter in, uh, for the mascot for uh, Fresno State is the bulldog. <laughs> so, so what do you think, Joe? I mean, I, can, I think I can get all of you in here. And, uh, Drew, I can get you in here. Drew Bessinger. <laughs> well, so I'm going to keep going with this G thing here. We have gifted students. We have gifted students. And our whole job is to try to like the guarantee bank, old guarantee bank building, is to guarantee them an opportunity to fulfill their potential. And we are working together in a community to do that. I've got a couple other G words here. Over on this table, I've got some of my foundation people. There's Gina, and then there's Rico Guerrero. <laughs> and then I've got Gus and Gretty. 
Let me tell you the Gus and Gritty story. So uh, just a year ago now, and this is an opportunity for all of you, just a year ago now, Gus and Gritty said, we're going to give $5,000, and, and our good foundation is going to match that $5,000 for scholarships, and we're going to do that on a giving Tuesday. And so we, so we got them to do that, and, they, and Gus and Gretty did that, and we thought, well, I don't know, Rico and Gina probably, probably thought maybe we'll get, I don't know, we'll double it. Maybe we'll get $20,000, and our students, who are great students, our students and our faculty, who are really solid, good, great faculty, they, they got together, and on that one day, they took Gus and Gretty's $5,000, and we raised $80,000. So, so um, th there are a lot of really good people here. I have to thank uh, 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 Lorenzo Rios and, and all the, uh, the military for opening this place up to us and, and the great partnership we have. You see we've got veterans over center here. And um, being a veteran, I, uh, of course, there is one Air Force colonel over here, and he's taking care of all those Army guys over there. The guys, he's going he's gonna to help the guys and the gals. And, and with all those kind of G words. I about run out of G words, but I want to I wanna tell you, I am really, uh, I, I have, um, I, I hate to, I'll, I'll do this to you, but, but I have a great deal of gratitude for all of you. <laughs> and, and especially all the generosity. Uh, we've got uh, people here that are supporting our colleges. I will tell you, we have about, uh, we were just under 60,000 students last year in our district. We go all the way from Madera up to uh, Yosemite, all the way down to Kings and Tulare County, uh, all, all over to the west of Fresno, and we are building everywhere. Your generosity and your goodness in passing our Measure C bond, we have almost a half a billion dollars, and we're spreading that around. We've got land in West Fresno that we're going to build a wonderful place. It's going to take people out of poverty and give them some hope in life. And it has a lot to do with your generosity and your supporting us in what we're doing. So I can't tell you how appreciative I am of that. Our students come from all backgrounds. We are Hispanic serving institutions. Clovis is a Hispanic serving institution. Over 45% of our students come from a Hispanic background. 60% of our students are low income students, which means they need help. And we are, we are about the business of uh, making education opportunity available to people throughout this valley. Christine Walters here is one of our, working with the foundation, another one of the great generous people here. And we are working towards making opportunity for everyone in this valley to raise themselves out of poverty. And uh, education is going to be a real key to that. So thank you for partnering with us. I appreciate all of your good support for us, your generosity, and, uh, and we'll keep going with the G words, and we're going to move downtown and, and, and uh, be a great, great contributor to the uh, downtown. By the way, I, just one little part on that, because some people question, we actually saved about um, uh, $30 million by buying a building downtown for $11 million, the old guarantee bank building, because now we don't have to build the same kind of parking structures that we have for Fresno City, and we're going to be able to build an even better science facility. We're going to be able to take care of parking by moving downtown. And so it's a good day. It's great to be here. Thank you all. I didn't realize I was going to get, like, intro music. <laughs> but it's a lifelong dream of mine, so <laughs> I'll have to choose the, the track next time, <clears throat> not the smooth jazz. So um, my name is Dr. John Forbes. I'm the Dean of Instruction for the STEM Division at Clovis Community College. And I have the privilege of introducing you to some of our dignitaries and uh, special guests that we have today. I was given a script for this event, and it said Dr. Parnell will introduce you, so thank you. Appreciate that. But, yeah, there we go. I wanted a G, so I, I went through my name while you were talking, and I don't have a G in my name, so that's really hope. Um, and then it says on my script to be funny and to say a quick joke. So um, I had this last night, and I shared this with my family, and they said, Dad, you're not funny. Um, but luckily, they had given me a very embarrassing book of dad jokes um, for my birthday this last year. 
So, um, so it's real easy. So I just, I just tell the joke, right? I just pick one out and just, and just tell it. So what's the um, difference between a formally dressed person on a unicycle and a casually dressed person on a bicycle? A tire. <laughs> it worked. I am honored to recognize our elected officials, dignitaries, and educational leaders. Leaders, we appreciate all of your support and time joining us today. I'm going to start off with elected officials and dignitaries. If you can please stand as I call your name and everybody else, please hold your applause till the very end as we announce everyone. I'm going to start off with our trustees from the State Center Community College District, uh, Debbie Ikeda, John Liao, and Ron Nishinaka. Thank you. We now have um, a list of elected officials here, uh, or representing. We have Christina, again, hold your applause to the end. Christina Solberg, Office of Senator Dianne Feinstein. Mark Blackney, Office of Congressman Devin Nunes. We have Kathy Mahan, um, Office of Congressman Jim Costa. Shannon Major, Office of Senator Tom Barry Hill. Chong Tua Muavang Su, Office of Assemblymember Dr. Joaquin Arambula, and Ian Coolbear, Office of Assemblymember Jim Patterson. We also had with us earlier a supervisor, uh, Nathan Matzig, uh, County Board of Supervisors, but he, he ate and ran, but I, I, can, I can attest to that, he is sitting right next to me. We have, and please stand uh, so I can recognize you, City of Fresno Mayor Lee Brand, City of Clovis Mayor Bob Whalen, City of Clovis Mayor Pro Tem, Drew Bezinger, you have a G in your name. Although he couldn't be here, I'd like to acknowledge that the City of Fresno Council Member Luis Chavez as he purchased a table for Associated Government students. So thank you for that. We have, yes, let's give him a round of applause. Oh, I'm getting there. So um, we have uh, Jose Flores, City of Clovis Council Member and Police Chief for State Center Community College District. We have Vong Muan Atua, City of Clovis Council Member. Daniel Guy, Office of the City of Fresno Council Member Gary Bredefield. Honorable Dale Ikeda, retired Fresno County Superior Court Judge. Chairman Tom Wright, Clovis Veterans Memorial District. Vice Chairman Dr. William Rice, Clovis Vet Memorial District. Clarissa Vivian, Office of Mexican Consulate, David Presadio. Uh, we have Tony Gomes, Fire Battalion Chief for the City of Clovis. We have retired Lieutenant Colonel Lorenzo Rios, Chief Executive Officer for the Clovis Vet Memorial District and U.S. Army Veteran. Trustee Valerie Davis, Fresno Unified School District. Wow, that's quite the list. Let's give them all another big round of applause. Yeah. Oh, did Claudia make it? Yes. Oh, I apologize. You're right behind in my line of sight. And also Claudia Casares, Fresno Unified Board of Trustees. Thank you. I'd like to introduce our educational leaders and partners. If you could please stand as I call your name. Again, hold your applause until everyone is announced. We have Dr. Joe Castro, President, and First Lady Mary Castro for Fresno State. We have Florence Dunn, President, California Health Sciences University. Dr. Joseph Jones, President, Fresno Pacific University. Donna Berry, Interim President, Reedley College, Madera Community College Center, and Oakhurst Community College Center. Sonia Gutierrez Mendoza, Director of Brandman University. Brooks Cornell, uh, Central Valley Campus Director for University of Phoenix. Dr. Robert G. Oh, you have a G as a middle initial, that's good. Uh, Nelson, Superintendent, Fresno Unified School District. Dr. Amir O'Farrell, Superintendent, Clovis Unified School District. Superintendent Darren Sylvia, Chawanakee Unified School District. Dr. Ben Duran, Executive Director, Central Valley Higher Eds Consortium. Justin Atkinson, Academic Dean for San Joaquin College of Law. Kelly Land, um, Land, Lanadone, I almost got through all of these. Land Anon, uh, Fresno County Librarian. And we have, a, so uh, I guess this is another joke I'm supposed to say. We have a lot of doctors in the house. <laughs> now let's give our educational leaders a big thank you, Clovis Crush, round of applause. 
We are very proud of our new campus and have a special video to highlight our innovative buildings and campus. And I think this is what you had sought a preview of while I was uh, coming to the stage. So at this time, we'll watch our, the drone video of our campus. Again, back to the strip, it's an all bold. Wow, was it that great? Um, but I, I, I love seeing that and just seeing the growth. Um, thankful that we have water in our valley, uh, all the green there, but um, also those brand new um, solar panels that are over the, um, the, the parking lot there. I'd like to introduce our next speaker and share a few key points about him. Uh, Damon Rapata is president of our associated government for the Clovis Community College. He graduated from Clovis High in 2017. Mr. Rapata has a passion for public service. He recently completed an internship with the City of Fresno Council Member Luis Chavez. We are confident that Mr. Rapata will run for public office one day, so this might be a start, and continue to leave a positive impact on his community and country. So please help me welcome to the stage ASG President Damon Rapata. Don't worry, I don't have a joke scripted, so we're all good. <clears throat> good. Um, <laughs> all right. I came to Clovis Community College as a first-generation college student, and let me tell you, I had no idea what to expect. But what I found at Clovis Community College was beyond community beyond any regular institution, beyond what people really believe a community college can be. Clovis Community College is truly a family, a family that cares and invests in every student's future, just like mine. It was from the very first week of instruction that I realized my experience at this college would be forever life-changing. This college's diverse culture has given me and so many other students opportunities to expand their horizons to areas they never believed possible. Clovis Community College took someone like me who had no real leadership prior to college, no extracurricular activities, and no clear path of what he wanted to do, and helped me grow into the person that you see before you. Here I am today, giving a speech as this breakfast standing before you as the Associated Student Government President with my future college and career in mind. The amazing faculty, staff, and administrators that make Clovis Community College shine above the rest make it possible for anyone to not only reach the educational goals, but their personal goals as well. Personally, I was able to develop as an individual, expand in all areas of my life, 
and become the person that I only ever dreamed of becoming. Professionally, I have gained invaluable real-world experiences. I have created networks that I didn't even know I could have. And I feel secure in my life because this college has guided me down a path that I know will lead to many more fantastic opportunities. I can honestly say that every great experience that has happened to me in the past year is due to this college. When I'm at UC Davis, I will think back to my experiences here. When I enter law school, I will be grateful for what I have learned here. And when I eventually run for office, <laughs> I will have an unending sense of confidence because I know that I am a product of the Clovis Crush family. I would like to leave you with something that I once heard our Dean of Student Services, Gertie Baybear, once say. Here at Clovis Community College, we do our best to ensure that not even just one student falls behind. Because if we let that happen, we just aren't doing our jobs right. And I can tell you, that is true. I have personally felt that sense of care on our campus. And you can go ahead and ask any student in this room, and they will tell you the exact same thing. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce Marco J. De La Garza, Vice President of Student Services. Wow. Garza. I got the G. But I got another one. Gracias. Okay. Okay, thank you everybody for allowing me to come here and speak to you guys. Okay, let me get my script ready here. Do, 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 do. Okay, where's my script? Dun, 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 dun. Somebody move my script. Okay. Marco, don't take more. Oh no, that's not. All right. Um, thank you again, gracias. Marco de la Garza, su servidor, you, you, to serve you, okay, because it's, it's incredible where I have landed, okay? It is truly incredible. I actually met a lost brother of mine, okay, Lorenzo, <laughs> okay? We supposed to talk for 15 minutes and he didn't let me go till about an hour and 15 minutes later. And if you know Lorenzo, you know why? He then baptized me as Mario. <laughs> After an hour and 15 minutes, you would think he would know my name, Marco. Okay? But it's that kind of energy that Lorenzo put out that I have found at Clovis. I, I'm coming from downtown LA, from the LA College District, nine college, uh, a nine college district. And it's amazing that our, as much support staff that we had in LA coming to Clovis is the other side of the coin. It's more, and I could not think that it would be more, but it has been a pleasure to be able to be with Dr. Bennett, okay? When he called, when she called and offered me the job, I was giggling, giggling. I kept it cool, <laughs> right? Said, let me think about it. <laughs> Went right to my partner, okay, and I asked her, what do you think? Say, what do you want? Say, I want to do it. I like the atmosphere. I told Dr. Bennett that I, I, I came the day before the interview with her, to, and I sat a day right outside on the benches and walked the halls. Okay? I wanted to see if I would fit, and I did. It felt good from my side. I was hoping that it would be good from their side. Okay? And actually, I thank you for that and the board. Okay, for to, to doing that. So, um, I'm the oldest of six. Okay, I have twins. They're my social experiment. <laughs> They're, I uh, have a boy and a girl, okay? Young adults, and they are completely, completely different. They love each other and hate each other at the same time. Okay, and it has been my pleasure to see them grow to the mature adults that they are. They are paying rent in LA, 
in a house that I'm leaving, okay? So, and I told them, oh yeah, you can keep the house, but you're paying rent. So, trying to instruct one student at a time, okay, to tell them how to grow up and how to be responsible. And now it is my honor to introduce um, Clovis Community College President, Dr. Bennett. Dr. Lori Bennett is responsible for leadership, budget oversight, and supervision of the newest, um, the newest college in the State Community College Center, Clovis Community College. She leads the college in developing and implementing our educational master plan and strategic plan, expanding our career technical education program, and ensuring that the college provides high quality instruction and student services. Previously, Dr. Bennett served as the executive director, uh, executive vice president at Moore Park College. Prior to that, she was the Dean of Student Learning, department chair, and business professor at Moore Park College. Dr. Bennett also taught at Tacoma Community Co in Washington and has over 10 years of ex business experience. Dr. Bennett received a Bachelor of Science degree in business from the University of California and an MBA in marketing and finance in the, from the University of Chicago and her doctoral degree in educational leadership from California State University, Northridge. Dr. Bennett is a native of Central Valley, having graduated high school in Bakersfield. She and her husband, Ken, have three children. Please join me, okay, in giving President Lori Bennett a clush crowd, a Clovis crush, okay, and a round of applause for her. Lighten it up a little. Good morning. That's a G word. Good morning. Wow. You all look amazing from the stage. And I really want to thank you, all of you, for being here today. We are so honored to have so many people and so many organizations here today to show your support for Clovis Community College. Before I start my presentation, though, I'd like to take a minute to thank our Crush Level sponsors. So first, thank you to Layla Forstead and the Fresno Clovis Convention and Visitors Bureau. When I first heard that the Fresno Clovis Convention and Visitors Bureau volunteered to be our Crush Level sponsor, I thought, this is perfect because if you think about us, our main campus is in Fresno, but our Herndon campus is in Clovis. So nice fit there. We serve students from both cities, and literally about half our students live in Fresno, and the other half live in Clovis. And in case you didn't know, the Fresno Clovis Convention and Visitors Bureau is Fresno County's official destination marketing organization. Its mission is to promote our destination to the world, and it's really exciting to know that they are able to provide internships to college students through their Destination Builders program. Thank you so much. I also want to give a big thank you to our media partners. I want to thank, thank you to Cumulus Media for your generous support publicizing our event um, throughout the airwaves. Thank you. And <laughs> thank you to KC24 for giving us your time to prepare a special video to showcase our amazing students. And thank you to AJ for providing that really warm and fun welcome this morning. Um, it was really great. And a huge thank you to all of our other sponsors. And with that, it is now my honor to tell you about Clovis Community College. I am currently enjoying my third year as the president of the college. However, I personally fell in love with Clovis Community College the first time I read our mission statement. The people at Clovis Community College are dedicated to creating opportunities one student at a time. I knew that a, college, a community college that focused on individual students was a special place, and I wanted to be part of that. 
What I hadn't expected, but I'm so grateful to be part of, is what I've seen since moving here a couple of years ago. It's this sense of community that this valley has, the way all these different groups come together for events like this and also working together, the city, education leaders, business leaders, community leaders, and others coming together for one cause to build up our valley. We work together to support our community and to improve lives. Clovis Community College is honored to play our part in helping to support our community and to improve lives through education. We have this amazing opportunity to build out a brand new college with this framework guiding our plans. There is no place I'd rather be. So today, I'm excited to showcase our amazing students, some of our new programs, and a few of our important community partnerships that make Clovis Community College the choice for academic excellence and student achievement. And we want to show you how our efforts are already significantly benefiting our community. So let me start with just a little history. This is our fourth year as a fully accredited college. As most of you know, we were a center of Reedley College for about 20 years. Many of you will remember us as Willow International. Um, it's part of why we're having this breakfast. We, <laughs> it's all I've heard since I got here. <laughs> We've been Clovis Community College since July of 2015. And the achievements that we've earned over the last couple of years were built from the groundwork set by leaders like Mr. Terry Kershaw, who was the past president of Willow International Center, and Debbie Aketa, the founding president of Clovis Community College. Since becoming a college, we've been celebrating each of our new milestones. We've started building our own rich traditions, and we've applauded the success of many of our students who will become the next generation of leaders throughout our community. Clovis Community College now serves approximately 12,000 students, give or take. We know we're going to be over that this year. That's 52% increase over the last six years. Clovis, thank you. Clovis is one of the fastest growing, if not the fastest growing, community college in the state of California. And we are now basically the same size as Reedley College. Our growth comes from a combination of two major things, expanding the number of programs that we offer to our students and the population growth of our local communities. Our master planning data forecasts that Clovis Community College enrollment growth will continue throughout the next decade. So who attends Clovis Community College? Well, about 54% of our students come from Clovis Unified School District. Another eight or 9% come from Fresno Unified School District. And about 38% come from throughout Fresno County with a growing number coming from Chawanakee Unified School District. Our student demographics mirror our local community. And also reflecting the needs of our community, 54% of Clovis Community College students receive some form of financial aid. Last year, we dispersed almost $10 million in financial aid to our students. Our goal is to be the college of choice for academic excellence, innovation, and student achievement. We strive for excellence in everything we do. Our faculty are truly innovative, creative, flexible, and dedicated to student success. They work hard to create an inclusive and engaging classroom environment, and they set really high expectations for their students, and they will not settle for less. Am I right? I try, but they continuously work to find new and better ways to support their students and to help ensure that every student can achieve our student learning outcomes. 
As a result of our hard work by our faculty and staff and our students, Clovis Community College student achievement scores are some of the highest in the state. Let me just share a few statistics from just last year. Our students earned almost 1,000 degrees and certificates, roughly doubling the previous year. Our course retention rates climbed to 90% or higher for all student demographics. Our students completed transfer level math and English within their first year at a rate more than twice the state average for community colleges. Our college course, our college-wide course success rate was also higher than the state average. And on overall completion rates, Clovis Community College ranked number one out of the Central Valley Community Colleges and number 19 out of all now 114 community colleges. So after attending Clovis Community College, where do our students transfer? Well, over half, over half attend Fresno State. And Dr. Castro, I want you to know we were number four last year on your top feeders community colleges. We will be number three this next year, this year, right behind Reedley and Fresno City Colleges. 9% of our students transfer to UC schools with UCLA and UC Merced tied for the top spots. The remainder transfer to either another CSU or one of our many um, local private universities. We are proud of our students. We work hard to ensure their success. We have a culture of innovation and high achievement, both for ourselves and for our students. And for this, we've been acknowledged several times. Last spring, we received a full seven years of accreditation. A huge thank you to all of the community members who came to our open forums to speak out on our behalf. And a special thank you to Producers Dairy for providing those delicious ice cream treats that helped us celebrate at the end of that very long site visit. We were honored last spring in Florida as a national finalist for the University of Florida Bellwether Award for our English Alignment Partnership with Clovis West High School that dramatically increased student readiness for college-level English from 33% to 95% for incoming freshmen. We were selected to participate in the State Chancellor's Online Education in Initiative, which will allow us to showcase our high online course success rates. We were selected by UC Merced to host the Small Business Development Center for our four county region to serve students, entrepreneurs, and small business owners. And we just received, hot off the press, notice from the Campaign for College Opportunity Organization that Clovis Community College has been named a 2018 champion for higher education for our exemplary work in awarding associate degrees for transfer. And all of that was just last year. <laughs> we don't intend to stop. On a local level, we continue to develop and expand our college. We look forward to using our Measure C bond funds to break ground on our new buildings in the next couple of years. We're continuing to expand our athletic program so that we can provide local students the opportunity to participate on competitive teams. And I am personally really proud of the fact that almost 100% of the students who participated last year and again this fall are from local high schools. We're expanding our music program. You heard Professor Hempt play the national anthem earlier. Next time we get together, I hope he has a crowd of students around him. Our honors program continues to grow with more than 300 students participating in the Leon S. Peters honors program this year. We are expanding our dual enrollment program 
which helps high school students earn, start earning college credit while still in high school. We spent last year talking with our local high school partners, with our business leaders, and with our healthcare providers about their needs. This year now, and going forward, we are working to build and expand those partnerships. As a new college, we have a unique opportunity to develop our new programs in partnerships with our local high schools, designing both transfer and career pathways for our students. We also want to build strong transfer pathways, as I'm looking at all of you, with each of our local universities, such as the education teacher pathway or partnerships like our pre-pharmacy transfer guarantee with California Health Sciences University. That's a lot of work. However, the best part of my job, honestly, is working with students and watching students like Mr. Damon Rapata, our Associated Student Government President, grow into self-confident, focused young adults, full of passion, ready to take on the world. The students at Clovis Community College are as diverse as the members of our surrounding communities, and they come to us full of hopes and goals and dreams. And it is our job to do more than just teach classes. We provide opportunities for students to get involved, to make lifelong friendships, and to truly grow into the people they want to be. If you are a Clovis Community College student in the room, will you please stand? I know they're in the back there. Come on, stand. These amazing students are our community's future. Healthcare providers, teachers, business owners, politicians, engineers, and artists. They are the future leaders of this valley. Most of our students come straight from high school. For some, it's an easy transition. For others, their life situation makes attending college difficult. Many work long hours or two jobs. Some are raising families. Others are veterans. Some are young and need to learn how to study. Some are really self-conscious and insecure. Others just want to like fly under the radar. Many are driven, but they need a little help getting to the next step of their journey. This is why Clovis, at Clovis Community College, we value our warm, supportive, inclusive culture. As we continue to grow, we are working hard to keep our small college feeling. We want every single person who walks onto our campus to feel welcome, to feel that they belong, and to know that they are a member of the Clovis Crush family. Could have said thank you there. But now I'd like to introduce Professor Anna Martinez to share her perspective on the role of faculty in supporting student success. The students and the staff. Staff. Once upon a time, there was a community college instructor. His student went into the hospital on the second day of class and ended up needing surgery. He went to visit her in the hospital, told her that he wouldn't drop her, and that he would help her make up any missed work. Once there was an instructor. A student came into her office to visit her office mate, the student's professor, for help on a paper, but that professor wasn't there. Instead, the student found this instructor who, rather than telling the student to come back during her professor's office hours, chose to sit down with the student, answer her questions, and show her how to navigate the course website so she would know how to submit her paper when she was ready. There was once a community college instructor. 
He saw a student on campus being verbally berated repeatedly by his girlfriend in what looked to be tense, emotional, romantic trouble. This professor had that student come by his office. He told him he had noticed the arguments, that the student did not deserve that treatment, and that he was worthy of being happy and being able to fully concentrate on school. Perhaps you've heard the tale of the administrative aide. When her student was busy working in the mailroom one day, this staff member paused amidst the rush of mailroom bustle and whispered quietly under her breath to the student, hey, have you had anything to eat today? It wasn't an accusation, no hint of judgment in her voice, no gotcha involved. She was asking because she truly cared about her student worker, a very real student who was experiencing some very real difficulties in her life. There was once a counselor. A student came back to his community college to visit some former instructors, ran into this counselor, and revealed that he had been diagnosed with cancer after being admitted to his four-year college and had been unable to attend. She reviewed his coursework from his time at his community college and discovered he was only one course away from an associate's degree. He enrolled in a work experience class in the summer and received his associates. The counselor walked him to the bookstore and purchased his cap and gown. The student immediately called his mom and told her of the good news and left in tears. He was the first one in his family to have a college degree. Allow me to tell you the story of a financial aid assistant. A student about to graduate with his associates with honors visited his community college's Extended Opportunities Programs and Services Office, or EOPS. He told them he would not be transferring because he had been denied his financial aid money for the year and couldn't afford it. A financial aid assistant in the office discovered the denial was due to an error that the student entered when he applied for aid. Due to the assistant's help, the student received almost $9,000 in back payments and burst into tears when he realized he could transfer. He was the first in his family to go to college, and he is now at Fresno State. Once upon a time, there was an instructor who, in her off-duty time, went to countless students' music recitals, games and plays, bought countless former students' baby presents, attended their weddings, friended them on Facebook, and visited them in cities both in the US and abroad. This same professor attended the funerals of four former students and still visits their graves twice a year, leaving a penny on the headstones so that their parents will know she remembers. While these sound like fairy tales, they're not. They are nonfiction moments in time. They are real stories of actual faculty and counselors, genuine student services staff, and authentic students who live and breathe a few miles north of here on both campuses of Clovis Community College. When I asked our full and part-time faculty to tell me specific stories of when our crush instructors had gone above and beyond the call of duty, I was overwhelmed with responses from faculty praising counselors, counselors praising assistants, full-time instructors praising part-time instructors. The position we hold on campus makes little difference when the common denominator with all of us is students. Each response I received revealed that staff members in crush country, regardless of job, see their students not as numbers, but as people. Real characters in these real life fairy tales that we are living every day. These are snippets of what we do semester by semester, minute by minute, one student at a time, here at Clovis Community College. We are proud of what we do, proud of each other, and most of all, proud of our students, who we are so glad give us this chance to help them find their happily ever after. Thank you. Next in this morning's program, a video about Clovis Community College's new mechatronics program that originally aired as a KC24 Education Matters segment.
inside some of the Valley's top manufacturing companies, producing products from glass to packaging. Also, processing our food. The systems that keep all of these machines moving is called Megatronics. Megatronics is a combination of electrical, mechanical, uh, computer and control systems. Clovis Community College is the first community college in Fresno County to offer a mechatronics program. Here you see students in the Advanced Industrial Automotive System course. Instructor Matthew Graff says they are getting hands-on learning, working on a piece of equipment he calls a mini factory. They're getting training in uh, mechanical systems, uh, electronics, ACDC, motor control, and then uh, introduction to PLCs. And then our more advanced classes are uh, process control, industrial networking, and then we have uh, the industrial automation systems where we kind of pull all that together. Graf says students who take the seven courses offered in the pathway are ready to go to work in one of the Valley's many industries, including high paying jobs at Amazon. But it's amazing how many young people aren't even familiar with mechatronics and what it offers. I had never heard the word mechatronics before in my life. Student Justin Webb says he thought it was more of an engineering program requiring four years of college. He was looking to get training and go right to work. But when I heard about this, I was kind of afraid to be still too technical and too deep, but once you get into it, it's like you start enjoying it. And then like you start seeing all the different facets that you can go into. Clovis Community has built a new classroom with the latest equipment and is offering a one-year program where students earn a certificate of achievement in mechatronics. They are prepared to go straight to work or a four-year college. So the Education Matters news segment you just watched provides a great transition into just a real quick update on our new career technical education programs. As you saw, we have a brand new advanced manufacturing mechatronics program and our first cohort will complete their program this semester. We have our expanding our healthcare programs. Not sure people realize biology is our number one major on our campus. Our students are interested in careers in healthcare, and we're currently developing the only occupational therapy assistant program in the region. Clovis has always been known for a strong reputation in its STEM programs due to our amazing faculty and state-of-the-art labs and equipment. And then recently, we've been focused on expanding our computer science programs. Our students in our digital media and graphic design programs use state-of-the-art computer systems, 3D printers, and cutting-edge design techniques. And we're starting a new environmental science program. We're focusing on both transfer requirements and local employer needs, so we can provide training related to areas such as soil, water, and air quality improvement. We're expanding our education program with a focus on helping to build the transfer pipeline for new teachers. We all know this is critical for our region, especially in the STEM fields. And now we're deciding on our next group of CTE programs, and that's where you all come in. We will be working with our local high schools, and some of you may be interested in serving on an employer advisory group, but our goal is to build the programs that you need. And then finally, I want to take a minute to say how we are also dedicated to strengthening our city and community partnerships. We're building a college, but we cannot build our college without community support. As I look around this room, I see people who have helped us build our new programs and provide needed services to our students. I see people helping to build networks and to help connect us to the community. But I also see people that we still need to reach out to, to ask, how can we partner? 
How can Clovis Community College help you and your organization reach your goals? How can we work together to support our students and the economic growth of this community? Perhaps a few of these examples might help. First, I really want to thank both mayors for being here today and acknowledging Clovis Community College as your college. We're really proud to serve both cities. We appreciate the continuous support from the city of Clovis and its council members. We want to thank the city of Fresno for providing the van that we talked about earlier that allows our students to ride free from River Park to Clovis Community College. We appreciate the Community Food Bank for helping us to open a new food pantry for our students. To all the chambers for helping us connect with the business community. And we opened a Veterans Resource Center with support from Clovis Veterans Memorial District, CalVet, the Veterans Administration Hospital, and other veterans organizations. Last but not least, our staff and students are out in the community providing service hours to community organizations like Habitat for Humanity and Reading Heart Book Donation. Clovis Community College is proud to be part of this community. We are committed to supporting the economic growth of the Valley and to improving quality of life through education. Our goal is to continue developing high quality educational programs that allow students to either start a career or go on to a university, either locally or away, but always, always with the mindset that they will come back to the valley to work and live. Clovis Community College is proud to be creating opportunities one student at a time. Thank you. And we're almost on time, but I really would like to end with about a two or three minute video clip letting a few of our students share their thoughts about Clovis Community College in this short video. Thank you. Family life has been a little bit different from me. I was uh, born into a single parent household and around the age of seven or eight, I was placed in foster care. The steps of adulthood have been entirely up to me financially and all the other components of undertaking that. Since college was entirely in my hands, it was quite a financial burden for me and I didn't know where else to turn to besides a community college and it's been the best decision I've made. I have four children ranging from 10 to four, but even when I couldn't be there for them because I was sitting in a lecture hall, they never once felt like I wasn't there and that was the most important part of going back to college for me, that I didn't miss out on their lives. I was born and raised in Madera. Um, I'm from a Hispanic family. I'm actually the oldest sibling and I'm the first to go to college, so I try to be a role model for my younger siblings. I chose to attend Clovis Community College because the instructors here are amazing. They help you. Um, they put the effort into actually teaching you and guiding you. They just know how to do their jobs. They know how to teach me and they help the students. They answer all the questions they need. So many students struggle with what classes do I register for to get out in the amount of time. Will my transfer recognize the units that I've taken? Have I done the right thing in my education? And Tasha has gone above and beyond as a counselor, and I'm sure every honor student gives her uh, much more praise than the average counselor does. Uh, in addition to that, I've had the most wonderful instructors. Mr. Burdick has been uh, very good at developing students in writing, and uh, Mrs. Martinez has been a great resource for me to develop my public speaking skills, which is something I feel that uh, will very well serve me in the future. Between Jared and Beth Rutledge, I think that my experience here is something that I'll tear up over every time I talk about it. <laughs> they have given me a power that I would have never had before. And the dreams that they have, I can continue for them. I just want to thank Gurdip and Patrick, who are my advisors for ASG. Uh, they're really positive and they've helped me shape myself here on this campus. All my communication instructors, uh, especially Erin Heasley, uh, she's one of my favorite instructors, and currently my two instructors, uh, Stephanie Briones and Anna Martinez. 
I want to go into maybe journalism and recreation administration to further my skills in being an activities director. My career goal is to graduate with a degree in business administration and specialize in human resource. Eventually I would like to work my way up in public health so that I can possibly work in epidemiology, work with the public. There are so many programs, there are so many opportunities at this college that anybody who has a dream, anybody who has that drive to get where they want to go is going to be able to get there. It's very humbling to know that I could hopefully make the same contributions myself with this college degree that I have a whole big team of people supporting me to get. We're still small, but we're growing in many ways. We're very diverse. This campus is just filled with many different people, and it's great to see the instructors interact with the students, especially with faculty and staff. There's always somebody here to help you. There's always somebody who cares, and they care because this is our community, and it's been that way since my first day. Our instructors are top-notch, and the facility uh, workers in every department financial aid and student services are beyond wonderful to you and I don't think that there's any place I would have rather started for a community college. It wouldn't have been possible without any one of the people involved at Clovis Community College. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Rico Guerrero, Executive Director of State Center Community College Foundation. Thank you to the students for sharing your experiences. It's always great to hear their perspective. Brittany Bauman and Dulce Garcia are here today. Please stand and be recognized. Thank you for sharing your story. I would also like to thank Matt Rosenfeld and his party people from KC24 for producing this wonderful video. One of the foundation's major roles to work with donors in our community to support student scholarships. One of the ways this was accomplished was at last year's first Giving Tuesday, as the Chancellor mentioned. In that day, we raised over $80,000 for Clovis Community College scholarships, resulting in doubling number, number of awards from 54 to 103 scholarships. As you can see in the back of your program, we are off to a great start for this year's Giving Tuesday with matching gifts from Gus and Gretty Bonner, again this year, thank you, and Gina Catone, our foundation board member, we are off to a good start. Mark your calendars for November 27 to help us crush Giving Tuesday. <laughs> Finally, thank you for supporting our inaugural President's Breakfast. Proceeds from this event will benefit the Clovis Community College Central Valley Promise Scholarship Fund. And that's my cue. Crush is cutting me off back there in the corner and ready to take pictures with you. Please share those pictures with the hashtag GoCrush. Have a great day. Thank you for being here.